Adelaide used to be sprawling with cinemas, with 10 in the CBD alone. Today, there are only four of these historic cinemas left in Adelaide. The first public screening took place on Monday the 19th of October in 1896 at the Theatre Royal, which was located on Hindley Street and has since been demolished. The Capri Theatre first opened on Wednesday the 8th of October 1941. It is one of Adelaide's oldest cinemas and is home to one of the largest theatre pipe organs in South Australia. In 2016, the Capri celebrated its 75th anniversary. The theatre itself was owned by Dan Clifford, and Dan Clifford was the owner of the Star Theatre circuit, which went all around Adelaide, and it was also in three of the country towns. And he started in 1916, and he had the biggest operating chain of cinemas for any privately owned person in the whole of Australia and gradually built more and more theatres and acquired theatres and also leases on some of the, the town halls around the place like the, the Woodville Town Hall, Theberton Town Hall and the Hindmarsh Town Hall and they were used as cinemas on Saturday nights. The theatre itself architecturally it was designed by Chris Smith who's a well-known uh, Art Deco architect, or was a well-known architect in terms of Art Deco in Adelaide. He designed uh, lots of theatres and um, made modifications to theatres. Also designed a lot of Art Deco council chambers, Brighton council chamber, Port Adelaide council chambers. Um, they were designed by him. So this was one of his theatres and it's called but it's the style of it is called Art Deco Modern because the earlier Art Deco theatres were more angulated and more elaborate in their design features, whereas this one is a more streamlined design and um, you don't find uh, light fittings dangling from the ceilings like you did in a lot of the others and big elaborate light fittings around on the walls and things. So most things here say they're streamlined and uh, the sort of geometrical design pattern here is circles and semicircles. I think the Capri is a great example of what going to the cinemas used to be like. So it has that old world charm and atmosphere, um, but more so uh, it's about maintaining a heritage listed building. Uh, so many old buildings are knocked down these days, but keeping part of that old time glamour and, and examples of Art Deco architecture um, alive and available for, uh, for young people to see and to, to visit uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, so a heritage listed building does mean that whenever there is work to be done that it must be passed through uh, the state heritage people so that they can ensure that we're um, being sympathetic to uh, when the building was first built. Um, and you know, so it does mean that there's a few uh, hoops to jump through whenever we want to do some work, um, but at least it means that we've got somebody double checking to make sure that we are being true to uh, the original design. So it's a good thing, just to, it's a bit time consuming, uh, but also the fact that, that any old building is obviously going to come with um, maintenance issues where bits and pieces fall off here and there uh, more regularly than what would happen with a, uh, a newer building. So um, there's always something to, to do and there's always a maintenance job uh, or a long list of maintenance jobs to be completed. Yeah, the local council, the City of Unley Council, who have been very supportive. Um, there aren't any state heritage or federal heritage grants available at this point in time, and so the council, who don't usually give to heritage, state heritage listed buildings, have um, opened up their conservation grant to us um, and have been very generous and very supportive in, uh, in all of the works that we're doing, which I think tie in nicely with the upgrade of Goodwood Road. So, um, yeah, they've certainly been. In, uh, 
been good friends throughout this process. I think that um, often people hear about um, fundraising events or screenings going on at the Capri and they believe that it's only open for events but we're open uh, every night Tuesday to, to Sunday uh, with the latest film screening so we always choose the latest releases because even though um, events are a big part of our business we want to make sure we uh, putting on something that has a real broad appeal to for them but also for the people in the uh, in the local area so people can come along and watch a movie and have a glass of wine or a beer and we sell Hague's chocolates in the candy bar and uh, popcorn so as with any other functioning cinema and um, you know you can see a movie at any time uh, support us number one by coming in and watching a movie um, and it's a nice environment to uh, to do it in as well and um, you can also book events here and to um, uh, whether it's a fundraising event for your local community sports club or whatever it is and um, we host them regularly I think we had about 320 of them in the last financial year so almost every night of the week there is something going on so um, it's us helping you but also helping us um, and then lastly volunteering however much time you can spare whether it's a, a, a day a week a, a sort of a day um, one day a month or a couple of days a month then we appreciate any help that we can get Rundle Street was once home to six theatres the Plaza Theatre the Rex Picture Theatre the Savoy the Sturt Theatre the York and finally the Regent the Regent was once known as Australia's most luxurious picture theatre. It was one of the first public buildings in Adelaide to be air conditioned and it seated 2,300 patrons. The theatre was closed temporarily in 1961 to allow six shops to be built facing a laneway on the side of the theatre. In 1967 plans were drawn up to accommodate 38 stores on the ground level. The Regent operated until it closed on the 28th of January 2004. The theatre's interior was gutted and became Regent Arcade, a shopping strip in Rundle Mall. Hanley Street was also a prime location for theatres, home to three, the Metro Theatre, My Fair Lady and the West Theatre. King William Street was also home to a theatre known as the Majestic Theatre. Wallace Academy was another past cinema in Highmarsh Square that closed in 2007. Today only two cinemas call the CBD home, the Palace Nova on Rundle Street and the Goo Film House on Hanley Street. Along with the Capri, there are two other Art Deco style cinemas, the Piccadilly Cinema and the Regal Theatre, formerly known as the Chelsea. The Odeon Star and Semaphore Road is another one of Adelaide's oldest cinemas. All four are still operating today. The Piccadilly Cinema first opened on the 23rd of October 1940. It had a single screen and was operated by the Clifford Theatre Circuit. It was taken over by Greater Union Cinemas in the late 1960s and renamed the Forum Cinema. It was purchased by Wallace Theatres in 1983 and converted into a three-screen cinema. It was renamed the Piccadilly. Today the Piccadilly is still operated by Wallace Cinemas and screens new release and 3D films. The Chelsea Cinema was one of Adelaide's oldest cinemas. It was under threat of being sold off to the highest bidder in 2009. There were fears that the beloved historic theatre would be lost forever. The theatre was purchased by Republic Theatres and turned into the Regal. The Odeon Star first opened on the 22nd of May 1920 as the Wondergraft Picture Palace. In 1952 it was taken over by Greater Union Cinema Chain and reopened on the 12th of June 1952. It was once again closed and turned into a furniture store. Part of the building was refurbished and turned back into a cinema opening as the Odeon Star on the 19th of December 1991. Hoff's Second Hand Emporium continued to operate in part of the building until 1997. The whole building is once again a cinema with three screens. Movies weren't the only thing being shown in theatres. Many would visit the theatre to see the latest newsreels. During World War II, newsreels would show the truth and vast impact of the war effort. There seems to be an air of unreality, as though the war were a million miles away. It's not. It's just outside our door now. I've seen the war, and I know what your husbands, your sweethearts and brothers are going through. If only everybody in Australia could realise that this country is in peril, that the Japanese are a well-equipped and dangerous enemy, we might forget about the trivial things and go ahead with the job of licking them. Jungle warfare is a new kind of warfare. It tears up textbooks and confounds the experts. It has played and will play a vital part in the Pacific conflict. The Allied nations must master jungle tactics and all that the term implies 
if the Japanese are to be torn out of their conquered empire. It has remained for an Australian to bring to the world the first vivid, starkly dramatic glimpses of the eerie jungle conflict, battle with unseen enemies, almost incredible hardship. Newsreels also showed various other things such as this cricket match played in Adelaide. The fourth test in Adelaide with Arthur Morris, a last minute choice in Australia's team, scoring freely off Stedham. There's two on this one and Australia needs them and how she needs them. Stedham again, the tall Englishman's bowling without luck and Morris hits him square for another two. The Australian opener gets 25 before he's out. But he and McDonald took the score to 59 before they were separated. Well, she's no one-eyed batter anyway. Appleyard to McDonald, the Australian's 48, but he pushes this one straight to May at forward short leg. Two for 115. Not a bad start, even if McDonald's selection was criticised. Appleyard to Harvey, and the left-hander swings lustily. His timing's out there, and the ball runs down to fine leg. They'll get two before Edridge field. And even the construction of a new road. One mile of main road through Vertingle Day. Impossible? Not to the engineers, men and machines of the New South Wales Government's Main Roads Board. In the beginning come the surveyors. Then, driving into the wilderness, a mechanised invading force tearing out pathways of progress. Bulldozers on the job, mowing down obstacles as a scythe mows down grass. They're building a strategic road leading, well, let's say, from hither to thither. It's on the hush-hush list. The bulldozer is versatile. Whether it be huge trees or ten-ton rocks, this terrific pushing power takes care of the situation. Carry all scraper scoop, Australian built, can shift a thousand tons a day, does the work of 100 men. It loads, carries, and spreads even layers of road surfacing. The consolidation it brings about helps eliminate corrugation, so frequently seen in unpaid. South Australia's obsession with film didn't stop at picture theatres. There were once 35 drive in cinemas across the state, and now only one remains the mainline drive in located at Jerps Cross, operated by Wallace Cinemas. So, remove the speaker from its stand and place it within the car. Secondly, adjust the volume control to right for loud, left for soft. The mobile snack bar service, flick down switch on right. We must issue this warning. No attempt should be made to disconnect the speaker. To do so, we'll immediately register on a red light on our control panel. The Skyline caters for every member of the family. Let the children enjoy themselves in the playground. And everybody will want to visit the snack bar where appetizing food and drinks are always available. And the barbecue for that luscious, juicy steak. One final word. When the performance ends and before moving, replace the speaker on its stand. You then drive forward and you move to the right. You must never reverse out of your position. Thank you, everyone. We trust you have a pleasant evening. Since the early inception of motion picture film by the Lumiere brothers in the 1890s, people have loved the experience of seeing films on the big screen. Good evening and welcome to television. With the introduction of television in Australia on the 16th of September 1956, it has since been said that this was the reason patron numbers dropped at many picture houses around the country. Today Australians still enjoy the cinema experience. 
Many families will create new memories, and with today's emerging technology, we can only wait to see what the cinema experience will be in the years to come. Thank you.